recording of this presentation is allowed. We do ask that your camera or streaming device remain at or below shoulder level, not blocking the view of anyone behind you. Thank you for your cooperation and for being considerate of those around you. Enjoy the show. Summer Scream. Six Flags Magic Mountain's Fright Fest is going extreme. With more haunts than ever before, featuring a record combined total of 20 haunted houses and scare zones, it's time to shed some light on California's largest Halloween event. Please, welcome to the stage, Six Flags Magic Mountain Entertainment and Events Manager and your moderator, Michael Ostrom. RWS Executive Producer for Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme, Allison Fox. <laughs> and RWS Executive Vice President of Production, Danielle Prim. EA, there you are. All right, come on over here. Chief Marketing Officer from Six Flags. What's up, everybody? Y'all ready for Fred Fix and Stream or what? Yeah. Man, it's exciting to be up here again. I'm a little less nervous this time, so hopefully it's not as stunted and ridiculous as it was last year, but we'll see how it goes. We're optimistic. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. I, I appreciate the, uh, the vote of confidence. <laughs> So we'll get into uh, we'll just jump right into it here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of switch over, and guide this presentation if this thing will work. Okay, hold on a minute. There we go. Hey, look, hey, it's us. Oh my God, yeah. Ooh, all, these good people. <laughs> all right. So um, EA, we're gonna start with you a little bit. Um, just want to have you talk a little bit about. You know, you've been a leader in the transition from Fright Fest to Fright Fest Extreme and taking on the role of the Chief Fright Officer for the Six Flags Corporation Ooh. most recently. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what this means, this transition means to you and our business. Yeah, I mean, could you guys tell from the video? It's huge. We're so excited. Just because we were known as the Halloween people, you could come visit us at Fright Fest, but this is taking it to the next level. It is huge. It is a transformation of Magic Mountain with all this new VIP coming in, all these mazes inspired, all these places to visit the park, food that's inspired by Halloween. I mean, it's just going to be like no other time to ever visit um, our parks. And it's spreading out through all six flags. And some of you are not from California. This is going everywhere. It's going viral through our parks, and we're very excited about it. Yeah, so honestly, kind of started there a little bit, but long term, how do you think this transition, you know, this strategy, how do you see this going forward for the company? Yeah, so right now, California and New Jersey, which are two of our biggest Six Flags parks, are going to do it big. They're going to be huge. You've got to go there first. The whole park is going to be extreme. 
but some of the pieces of the big puzzle are going to go to other parks. So you can visit our Dallas park and see some of the IP there, like Stranger Things. You can go to Georgia and see Stranger Things. So as it, as it grows, it'll go to other parks. But the extreme is here in California and in New Jersey. Danielle and Allison, um, you know, RWS, we partnered with y'all last year to do The Conjuring, uh, which is a huge hit for us, and we love that maze. So just, you know, how did y'all come into the mix this year with Fright Fest Extreme? Well, I think, how many of you saw The Conjuring last year? <laughs> it was a huge success for us, and I think EA, Jeff, and I realized how much of a success it was, and we thought, why not add more IPs to make it even bigger and even better? So um, EA and I had a lot of conversation about what IPs to bring to the table, how many we would need to make an impact in the industry. I think we did a pretty good job of the IPs we chose, right? So, um, so anyway, we actually assembled a team from the Six Flags um, side, from the RWS side, and we brought them to our New York City headquarters where we did a three-day ideation session around everything that we wanted from these IPs, how scary these houses could get, what we wanted the overall event to be, and we ended up with Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme. So now moving forward, I have an, assembled an amazing team led here by this wonderful woman, Allison Fox, who is doing... amazing job right now um, kind of organizing what's happening with the IPs also uh, assembling all the design and creative elements we're installing all of the houses at the parks and they're going to be bigger and better than anything that you've ever seen before That's very exciting. You know, and Allison introduce you as the executive producer of Fright Fest Extreme um, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing from the like the design side to make this the most extreme Fright Fest so far? Of course, absolutely. So we've employed some incredible designers, um, some familiar faces, we've got a fantastic team, and we're also telling stories that you guys haven't seen before. You've seen these IPs before, they've been out there, right? But the angle that we're approaching them from is to make sure we're showing you your favorite parts of the story, but also the parts of the story that you haven't seen play out live yet. Ooh. That's what makes it extreme. Very succinct, thank you. You're welcome. You bookended it and make sure that we know it is extreme. <laughs> All right, we're going to start getting into some of those IPs right now. So starting first, coming to Six Flags this year, Stranger Things. Woo! Okay, that's yeah, very exciting. Uh, Ian, yeah. this is obviously a very popular attraction yeah. based on that. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the storyline and what is going to make this specific house unique? You know, what we loved about Stranger Things is that it has this appeal across generations and just across all kinds of female, male, it doesn't matter, like everybody loves this. So we were so excited to bring it into the portfolio um, and it has a real storyline. And so we wanted it to still represent the nostalgic beauty of the story. I am an 80s baby. I know you probably are skins on the and, um, and I just loved bringing that to life, like having you walk through it and feel like you're back in that era and you're going to a dance party and you're going to then be very scared because all these you know, evil things are going to infiltrate what is a high school extravaganza. So I think that there's gonna be a lot of fun in walking through the nostalgia of it while also getting the shit scared out of you. <laughs> Did I miss anything that made it? <laughs> no, I'm I'm so you're the boss, so you do whatever you want. Yeah. If you open the door, though, I can't tell you that the rest of us are going to close it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you kind of you got into that. But how do you think this is going to, uh, besides getting the shit scared out of us, how do you think this is going to enhance the overall guest experience? I mean, I, the, the, we talked a little bit about it, but we were very thoughtful about how the portfolio of movies was chosen. I. You can be a little jealous because part of my job was to sit every day and watch all these films and kind of figure out what would really be something you all would want to come in and see. And so they're super, super scary. They're super, super gory. And then this one's a little bit more cerebral, but still super scary. So every single movie IP had to play a role so that every single one of you would want to see all of it, but would probably have one you really, really love that would be your super favorite. Um, so they all kind of play a role in the crown jewels of what is going to be this program. Yeah, excellent. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Allison, can you tell us about any unique elements or technology that are going to be featured in Stranger Things specifically? Well, I don't want to give anything away, right? Well, I mean, I mean, they all have to buy tickets. Hey, there's going to be, you know, lights. There will be lights. Scary people. <laughs> there will be fog. <laughs> there might be a strobe or two. Unheard of, right? Like, never before. <laughs> you're, like I said before, you're going to see parts of the story that you have not seen before, and some of the technology that's being implemented is out-of-the-box thinking to solve, um, let's see, really basic ideas. Um, but bringing things like the Upside Down into real life and making you feel like you're walking through it is um, a challenge that we were up for, and I think you'll really enjoy what we've come up with. Oh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, moving forward. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Army of the Dead, uh, Daniel and Allison. If you could just share with us some of your thoughts about the theme of this haunted house and what we're doing, what we're doing with Army of the Dead this year. Sure, I'll start. And I think that the, the real theme behind Army of the Dead started with that um, three-day brainstorm session that we had in New York. It was important to us that we were utilizing the park as it already existed. And one of the mazes that already exists at Magic Mountain that is very well known is the Aftermath Maze. And that is the location that we chose that we thought would be perfect for Army of the Dead. We're Army of the Dead. We are very excited about the Netflix partnership and we want to make sure Army of the Dead is highlighted in the exact correct way. So the re-theming of the aftermath is really what inspired the creative behind Army of the Dead. It is. It's an exceptional outdoor space and if you've seen the movie Army of the Dead, duh, a lot of it takes place outside in a, you know, a post-apocalyptic environment, right? So we already have that environment and it was beautiful and all we have to do is add to it and create some really terrifying zombies that have actually never really been seen anywhere before. Did you know that, Mike? No, I didn't. <laughs> Very impressed. I, I, I'm here to learn it just like everybody else. I'm so excited for this event. No, it's going to be fantastic. We're so excited, like like y'all said, to be working with Netflix on this. It's just going to be a very unique thing to bring the Vegas hellscape to life. <laughs> it's not your parents on the apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Conjuring Universe returning in a way this year. But uh, why don't you all tell us a little bit about how things are going to be different in the Conjuring Universe this year. Sure. So I'm proud to say that last year, RWS and Six Flags were the first people to be able to bring the Conjuring Universe to, li to life in one of our haunts at Magic Mountain. And like you said, a lot of you saw that already. And the success was unparalleled. However, because it was the first time that it's been presented anywhere, we had a ton of learnings, both on the creative side and also from your feedback. So what we've done this year is take all of that feedback and brainstorm ways to keep the core of The Conjuring, but make it bigger and better. And by making it bigger and better, we've added the entire universe. So we're talking all nine films, folks. Oh, all of the yeah. nuns, that's right. All of the Annabelles. Um, and it's incredible. It's the greatest mashup of all time. Um, lots of very spooky spectrals for you to see in there. It's super exciting. I love that you called it the ultimate mashup. I think that's, like, that's the best way to describe that house. It just is a little bit of everything and takes the scare to the next level. And I'll also add that I think, um, to EA's point earlier, there's something for everybody. And this is definitely the maze that is a little bit more psychological thriller that's going to kind of get you in your mind, not necessarily in the gore. Yes. Perfect. You kind of answered my question, EA, that I had for you. Yeah. Thinking ahead, it was, it was uh, what, what, what efforts have y'all made to, to ensure that this is going to be scary and, you know, immersive and really drive that home with the country? I would say that of all the things that we worked on the most, it was this idea of just scaring you to the point of no return. It really needed to feel like you started at the beginning you finished, there was a story that was told to you, and you were just left in a ball of like scary madness right after. We spent a lot of time talking about all of them like that, and especially this one, because to Danielle's point, it's very cerebral, and it's very psychological thriller, but it's still gonna be super scary. Perfect. It terrifies me, just for the record. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. Yeah. That nun lady, oh, she's yeah. phallic. 
we had to bring Annabelle with us, you know, for the for the show floor, and just uh, yeah, her sitting in my office is uh, not good. It's very. Do you find any notes around your office? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of weird stuff crayon? happening. Like just yeah. Sorry. All right, hey, we're here before we talk a little bit about Saw 20th anniversary. Jesus. Where do you get there? Walk right by, be scared. It's terrifying. <laughs> so this is our third time having Saw to count screen break last year. It's the third presentation of Saw, um, but we did upgrade it last year, and we've worked with Lionsgate closely this year to do some more. So EA, can you talk a little bit about what people can expect to see different in Saw this year? What I loved about this one is if the previous one was a mashup, this one's a retrospective. I mean, to to say that this franchise has been around for 20 years is amazing, it's impressive. Everybody knows Saw when it comes to the Halloween world and when it comes to the scary world of mazes. So for it to encompass the history of Saw, that's what you can expect and it's gonna be so exciting because if you do love Saw, it's just gonna take you back and back and back and then forward because God knows it'll continue to live, you know, moving forward and this just will inspire you to continue to love Saw past and future. How do you think they're gonna react to it? Oh, I think they're gonna love it. It's gonna be awesome. Who, which, which one of you guys likes Saw? Yeah! One or two. Yeah, one or two. You guys are gonna have to come see it. <laughs> Allison and Danielle, can, without giving away too much again, can you tell us about any new interactive elements or surprises that all these cool people can look forward to? You keep asking me questions I can't fully answer, but I think this year, the speed maze is gonna be much more engaging for the audience, less about just moving through the line and more engagement. Exactly, like you're gonna feel like you too are trying to escape. It's gonna be great. You're gonna see those iconic traps from the last 20 years of films. Um, you're gonna be part of the action. It's gonna be super cool. Right, Millie? <laughs> Okay, moving forward, uh, we're talking about. Hey, relax over there, Billy. All right, we're talking about some of the things that are coming back this year, so I'm happy to announce it. Willoughby's Resurrected, condemned, forever damned version, uh, is coming back this year. Truth or Dare, Vault 666, and Sewer of Souls all returning, all with minor enhancements as well as part of the, the boost of extreme, uh, to the extreme level of Fright Fest. So expect to see a couple new little things in each one of these houses. That was really important to us, right? It's extreme, and you're bringing in this new movie IP, but there's some great equity inside the park. There's things that you guys will be coming to visit that we wanted to make sure just looked that much more amazing this year because we're taking it to the next level. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're very proud of those mazes. A lot of them developed in-house by our amazing creative team. And, you know, we're just, we're happy to, to continue to offer those and really keep enhancing them as we go forward. So, um, returning this year also are five scare zones. Uh, City Under Siege, Exile Hill, The Dead Zone, Carnival Hill, and Devil's Triangle. All again with minor upgrades and things that we've added. We always kind of mix up our scare zones a little bit with new talent, new, you know, um, new lighting effects, all kinds of things. So expect to see plenty of new things coming, uh, including uh, obviously our very popular and exciting slider show returning to City Under yeah. Siege this year. So. Creative director Mark Wing and our amazing slider staff. They are putting together some fantastic shows for you all, so be excited for that one because I sure as hell am already. Okay, we're going to move forward with one new, sixth new amazing announcement. So, Aftermath, while we teased was being used for Army of the Dead, is not dead yet. So Aftermath, Nocturnal Hunt, will be coming to Six Flags Fright Fest Extreme this year. And Allison, do you want to tell us a little bit about Nocturnal Hunt? Sure, I would love to. So as we were doing a park visit, we're walking through Aftermath, we're seeing this part's going to be great for Army of the Dead. Let's split this in half and do something different with this half. What can we do that ensures that you're having two different experiences in a similar area? And so we looked to our trusted colleague, Brian Arsic. amazing idea partnering with the team at Six Flags for Nocturnal Hunt. It's going to be dark, it's going to be spooky, and you're going to be hunted. It's going to be a lot of fun. A new twist on, a, on an 
an old faithful maze and one that we love. So, yeah, if I've counted correctly, that looks like we have 11 haunted houses coming to Six Flags Magic Mountain this That's a really year. big number. That's quite huge. As a matter of fact, it's the most in California. Yeah. What does that mean to the, to the company to be that big, to be the leader in the uh, largest something... haunted house? Or haunted house. Haunted attraction. In yeah, for sure. It's, it's something we wanted. We wanted to be number one. We wanted to be able to say that. We're very proud of it. Come to us, because you can't get that anywhere else. Because that's what we want to be. We want to be the leaders in it. And we're going to miss it. Right? It's huge to be able to say it. We're going to say it all the time. So we're very proud of it. <laughs> On top of 11 mazes, I told you about five returning scare zones, but that doesn't mean that we aren't adding three new ones as well, because we're going for everything. So our three new mazes, again, led by our in-house creative team, Mark Wing, and all of our talented staff there, are Underworlds of Oz, replacing Territory Twisted in the Scream Punk District. Uh, you'll be able to meet some of your favorite Wizard of Oz inspired terrifying people, flying monkeys and witches and all kinds of things. Some new scare elements coming to that as well. A lot of technology, we're investing quite a bit into the Underworlds of Oz scare zone, so please look out for that. Some of you people with a keen eye at our pa or excuse me, at our booth, I have, might have already seen some characters walking around from our new maze going into the Whistle Stop Pistachio Park area of the park, Plaza de la Muerte. So based on Dia de, de los Muertos, um, we're bringing you a whole, just that, that whole world with some of the most amazing makeup design from Scott Rapp and the screen team and our very talented uh, makeup artists here. Um, shout out to Cody who did the makeup for the, the, the character at the, at the booth right now. Go take a look at that. It's fantastic. Uh, it's just going to be a fantastic, beautiful scare zone. And then coming to the Baja Ridge area of the park, Grimlore Ridge, kind of a... Uh, um, Bringing back a little bit of an old theme that we used to have at the park called Raven Stitch, uh, a pack of murderous crows taking over the Baja Ridge area with a whole bunch of new effects and everything too. So another extremely detailed makeup design and something that we're really looking forward to, to having you all come and see. So the whole park is going to be filled. You've got nowhere to hide, scare zones everywhere, mazes everywhere. It's going to be incredible. We are truly the biggest, largest haunted attraction in California. You know, the reason is that we wanted you all to get a first inside look at this maze. Woo! So we do have a, a quick video we're going to play right now, and we'll, we'll go into a little more depth for Trick or Treat. Yeah. Oh, 
The, obviously, you got a big uh, fan base here. We got quite a loud, loud, uh, loud response for Trick or Treat. Woo! Yeah. 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 Sam's here. Say hi, Sam. Sam. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, what uh, what inspired you to partner with all, with RWS and, and Six Flags to bring this story to life here at our park? Oh God! I mean, in case you guys can't tell, I love Halloween. Yeah. Uh, but part of that love for Halloween, I mean, when I was a little kid, I started creating Halloween haunts in my basement right around this time of year. Um, I mean, doing a home haunt or a front yard haunt was always a huge thrill for me. Still is. I still get friends together every Halloween and terrify trick or treaters. Um, uh, and so the idea of doing a maze with you guys, I mean, I could not pass up that opportunity, especially because I want to work the maze for a night or two. Um, I mean, it's just a specific thrill scaring people, whether it's through a horror film um, or a Halloween maze, there's just nothing like it for me. It's, it's a rush. Yeah, when we met, when we all met together and started this process, we talked about, you know, kind of a, a few key concepts that make this specific one unique to some things that haven't been done in the past. Allison, Mike, Danielle, can you all talk about some of those things that, that, that we're doing, you know, differently with Trick or Treat and Six Flags? I mean, I'd love to start, and then if you want to chime in. Go for it. Okay. Uh, we're doing, when we first met, right, we discussed the linear storyline of Trick or Treat, and Michael was so awesome in saying, you guys don't have to follow that. Let's explore the trick or treat verse. Let's go all the way back to the graphic novel, y'all. Let's show you some things, like I said, that you haven't seen before. So in this experience, you're gonna get an opportunity to explore environments that you've never seen before, and that Sam inhabits in a new and exciting way. Did I cover it? Yeah, that helps. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, basically, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys are aware, but there are several, like, graphic novels and comic books that expand the lore. Um, and I said, you know, there are a lot of cool environments. So, for example, there's, there's one book called Days of the Dead that shows Sam and the holiday and how it's celebrated over the years. So it goes back to ancient Ireland, uh, it's like 1950s L.A. Uh, there's a story that takes place in the Old West, which you wouldn't expect Sam to be a part of, but he's there. Uh, so I, I told them just run wild with it, like grab characters and scenarios and environments from those other stories, and they did, and it's turning out wonderfully. We're excited, man. It's gonna be really cool. Can you guys talk about, well, you kind of got into it a little bit, but is there anything unique or anything that you want to highlight you know, from a you know, uh, story or uh, technology side for, for Trick or Treat that you want to talk towards in this one? Um, really just, I suggested everything. I said <laughs> I did. wanted animatronics, I yep. wanted holograms. Uh, we've been working over the years with a company called Atmos Effects, which creates these really, really cool sort of holographic projections that you can put in your windows, in your doorways, atmosfx.com. Uh, and they just sort of allow you to put Sam wherever you want. And I, I connected the group with those very talented guys and said, I'm sorry, I just saw Michael Myers in the audience. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I really, and I also suggest like connecting with you know um, Trick or Treat Studios and some of our amazing partners who've created really cool costumes and props and merchandise. So it's like a big Trick or Treat family reunion, and they're all uh, congregating in our maze. Yeah. Of all the different movies that we looked at on the list, this one got the most excited response from our entertainment teams and our presidents who run the parks. Like they just couldn't believe we were gonna be able to partner with you. And I think there's a little bit of a psychology in it, right? Because it's about a kid and you bring kids to Six Flags and how disturbing. And it all comes together like this and you've got this kind of kid causing all this trouble. And so they were really excited about this above all the rest um, because it felt very special and it just felt like it was the perfect. We're very excited about it. 
I mean, it's combining my love. I love Halloween, I love theme parks, I love roller coasters. I mean, that, that clip you saw at the end of Sam on the roller coasters was a specific request from me. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and we went out to Six Flags uh, Fiesta, Texas two weeks ago to shoot that. And, you know, at first they thought, well, we could just, you know, grab a store-bought stamp costume. Like, no, I have the screen used costume in my house. I'm flying it out to Texas. So, like, we specifically went out and did that. And I said, can we put Sam on the roller coaster? And so I rode the roller coaster with Sam next to me. And, I mean, that's the closest I'm going to get to, like, taking my kid on his roller coaster. <laughs> But it was great. The, 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 the actor, the young actor who played Sam, I don't think he had any idea who the character was or what he was doing, but it was a good time for all of you. You know, your passion for, for the industry, for, for everything is, you know, it's, it's electric. It's, it's, like, it's like all of us, you know, working in the industry here, we have that same level. And so it's been so cool to see your passion for this project and bringing out Sam and, and everything to, to film that. So. Would you guys like to talk a little bit about how Mike's passion has influenced y'all in the creative process? Oh, absolutely. I mean, from the get-go, it was, let's talk to the IP representative. Shout out, Amato. Um, and immediately he was like, let's bring Michael into this conversation. He knows this property better than anybody. Let's talk about what he wants. And to be able to have an open conversation with you about what do you want to see? How do you want to do this? What can we do together that's going to be awesome? I mean, it made it the easiest experience you could possibly imagine. We just, you know, now we're worried we're gonna let him down every step of the way. I'm kidding, we're not gonna let you down. It's pretty rad. When can we do Krampus? Yes! because the book was so good, like, that's how it felt, I think, from a design standpoint, we did not want to let you down. We wanted to make sure that as you all walked through that maze, that it was everything you'd expect it to be because of how you had felt about the film. And I think these guys have done, done a really good job bringing it to life like that. You're going to walk through it and be like, yeah, that's exactly what I expected. This is what this maze should look like. A lot of work behind that. I'm more excited about it. And I'm dead serious. I want to work the maze. Every single park that it's in. I think it's three parks. You're going to. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So when you guys go, I could be jumping out at you, just FYI. Okay. I'm, we're going to hold you to that. You're going to be uh, probably you know, one of my new favorite employees, I'll tell you that. <laughs> if you, uh, HR's going to love me. Yeah. Yeah. You better not charge us the director fees that are worth the days. Oh, uh, yeah, please. Well, look, just want to shout out real quick, sixflagsjobs.com, come work with Michael Doherty at Turkey Treat, all right, thank you. <laughs> a truly unique experience that would be, I, I have a feeling, anyway. <laughs> I, mean, I, I scare people like my friends or complete strangers just for fun. <laughs> you know, so FYI, like right now a friend of mine's watching my dogs back at my house. Um, and what he doesn't know is that I've rigged one of the speakers upstairs to play creepy noises for like the next hour. <laughs> so this is all happening in the background. I don't have to do anything. I just programmed it to happen. So I'm expecting this to be a text message by the time this panel's over. <laughs> We're in connection with our, our tech team a little bit later. We have to get some ideas out of that head, dude. We need some more, we're gonna need some more stuff going in the park because we need some of that scary stuff in the room. It's definitely in my office. I think we could use that. Alicia would probably love that. Or Alicia, I'll scare you with some weird sound effects coming up. Um, EA, uh, can you talk a little bit more about just like, you know, how his, like Mike's open-mindedness to do all this and how that has just, you know, assisted bringing all this stuff to life from, from you know, the, the high level that you guys are doing. Well, I will tell you, because I'm the corporate lady, that it's not always easy to work with people who have a vision and they want the vision set a certain way, and you're trying to kind of go fast and make it happen. And I think from everything that I've heard about this partnership, it's just been free-flowing, it's been very open, and very collaborative. Um, and that's the best type of partnership when we're creating something like this. Um, we have gone really fast. We, we have been, obviously, for the Halloween people, you can come see us for Fright Fest, there's a lot of exciting things going on, but this idea of taking to the extreme is something we just literally thought about in the last year, because we just want to continue to make Six Flags as amazing as possible. So we went super fast. 
So not only is it great to work with people who have a vision, they know how it works, and they infuse it into everything we do, but then they're able to work quickly. <laughs> That's very important to us, because we want it to be ready to go live you know, by the time Halloween hit. So this has been done in less than 12 months, which is a true testament to our WS, because they showed up and said, you want to do it that fast? We'll do it that fast. And so that, that collaboration with people who are willing and have an openness and have thoughts make it that much better. And that, that's been what Sugar Tree's been about. Michael, were there, were there any specific scenes or moments that you know you were essential to you for this attraction? Um, I mean, no. I mean, what I really love about the collaboration, and you know, whether it was with you guys or our other partners, is for me, like Trick or Treat has become this amazing like community art mural where people who are very passionate about the title and passionate about Sam come to me with ideas about how they would want to expand the folklore and the legend. Um, you know, through Halloween mazes, graphic novels, whatever. And it's become like the ultimate year-round Halloween party for me. You know, so working with other talented creatives who, who present these just fun, unique ways to sort of celebrate the character and the title, um, I don't really have to do that much work. You know, other saying like other than like saying add more blood here. Like oh, other, yeah. it's like everyone just does such a bang up job because they bring so much passion to it. It's such a great film. Like, this is Halloween comfort food, right? Like, this is like start the season kickoff. Like, here it is. And you just keep watching it and watching it and watching it. It's, it's one of my favorites. It's just, it's, it lends itself so well to translating it into real life. It really does. Absolutely. With this, we're, we're adding a couple of things that have never been seen before in real life. The cornfield and Sam's lair. Um, can you guys, you know, just talk about bringing these to life for the first time? Sure. <laughs> we can. All of you, please. There's Sam's there. Question. What do you guys imagine Sam lives inside of? Because to us, he lived inside a giant pumpkin. <laughs> with sticky floors and candy and things strewn about where he just plans his mischief and how he's going to come out and find you if you break one of his seven rules. You get to see that. You get to walk through it. You get to live in it. And you get to maybe get, you know, Scared by Sam inside it too. That's pretty cool. And I love this design when they showed it to me because you know we haven't seen this in the film. But you know I just suggested well I think his room or his lair would actually look a little bit more like an unruly teenager's. So not only is it sort of just creepy, but there's a fun aspect to it too. So it's, it's not in this particular piece of art yet, but I feel like there would just be centuries of souvenirs from Halloween's past that Sam has gathers, whether it's, you know, old candy wrappers, bits and pieces of uh, costumes, or pieces of his victims, who knows, but he has, like, a massive collection. Um, horror movie posters. I think I said, like, there would be, like, TVs with a VHS. You did, you mentioned a VHS stuff. specifically. You know, he loves fun, he loves mischief. Um, it's not just all about the spooky and the creepy. Yeah, it's, uh, shout out to my mom, that's my room from when I was on TV. <laughs> they just described it right there, so. Uh, sorry, Mom. Well, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting paid back now, so that's all right. Um, you know, Allison, Danielle, um, how did y'all balance that? Staying true to trick the trick-or-treat verse, but still bringing something new and exciting to our guests. How did that all kind of come to fruition in the design phase? It goes back to the same thing we were talking about, about how open Michael was to just exploring whatever and telling us what he wanted to see and knowing what's been out there before and what worked really well that we should also make sure everybody sees and what hasn't been seen before and how we can harness that and create a new environment. I will say this partnership has been amazing and I think it's gonna only heighten your experience by being having Michael involved in it and telling us how he sees it. Amazing. <laughs> many people through as possible that was we didn't we didn't have a lot of mandates and directive other than make it amazing have the ip come to life but we also needed as many of you going through it as possible so there was a lot of thought spent behind how does it flow and how do people kind of get to experience it as they go but still have as many people as possible go through that's very important to us and that was something we thought about for all of the different mazes because everybody has to be able to enjoy it and last year we had two hour waits for the conjuring. So we, we've thought a lot about how are they designed in a way that still feel like you're kind of lost in it, but still flow through it so everybody gets to see it. That was important to us too. My favorite question was, how do you think the maze should smell? 
Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I guess sense or the old the olfactory experience is like a, a new layer in mazes and mm. and I, I thought, well it's you know, chocolate and candy and pumpkin scented candles and whatnot. Um, anything just to heighten the the vibe. Yeah. Is it so real for you that it's like it comes to life like that? Is yeah. It, it should smell like you're sticking your head in a candy bag on <laughs> That actually leads us into exactly what I was going to ask next, is how that's how lighting, sound, smells, how that's going to affect this maze and what you guys are doing from the, from the design side to, to bring that full immersion to life and bring us right into the movie Trick or Treat, or the Trick or Treat first, I should say. It's a coin that phrase, it's the Trick or Treat first now. Um, exactly that. Smells, lighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> somebody somebody wanted the smell of vomit? Yeah. That wasn't me. That wasn't me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mixed that. <laughs> but we talked a lot about in having to have smell and feel tactile and feel like all of your senses were going to be engaged in this house and in all the mazes because that's all part of it. It has to be really immersive or else it will feel like a true thrill ride. And so I'm not surprised you all talked about vomit and pumpkin for this one, but it smells was a big topic of conversation for many months. Because we wanted to be sure that it just, and you, you could, even if it was dark, you can kind of figure out where you are and where you should be. That was very important. It's all part of it. Again, with the smells of, sorry, sorry, mom, I know that <laughs> high school room. I just, you're going back and you totally described my childhood here. Again, just terrible. Girl, I apologize. Mike, what kind of experience do you hope your guests will, will, will leave with when they come through this attraction? Oh, gosh. Um, for me, I think it, sh it should be a complex series of emotions that match the feeling you have on Halloween night when you watch the movie. Um, I mean, what I love about Halloween as a holiday, and I hope the movie captured it for you guys, is that it's a mix of laughter and screams, fun and fright. You know, Halloween isn't just about brutality and straight horror. I'm sorry, Michael Myers is freaking me out. <laughs> Um, uh, but it's, 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 it's a study in contrasts, you know, and that's what I hope you get when you go through the maze and when you exit it, is that you had a great time being scared. When you're designing these, it's almost like a psychological experiment, right? You're trying to see how far you can push people one direction without pushing them so far that they're not enjoying themselves. So there's so much like the smells and, and you know, Base thumpers and things that are going into making and affecting your experience. Wait, what's a base thumper? I can't tell you. You have to find out <laughs> when you work the maze. <laughs> it sounds dirty. It's not. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, things like you know, it, you it affects your stomach. It sh shakes your core as you're walking through the maze, but you don't even hear the sound because it's coming at such a different decibel that you don't understand why you're feeling uncomfortable, but it's making you uncomfortable. Will it make people puke? No. Alright. <laughs> I told you, no bot smells. I'm going shot this. We're not done yet. We could add to that. We could make that happen. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> For six flags, right? Like, after the immersive experience and really feeling like you were immersed in the film, we want you to go to the end of it and say, I'm gonna do it again, you know, and kind of go back and come back another day and keep coming back from the season and keep coming back next year. We want to create these experiences that truly just make people feel like, oh my God, I want to get back on the roller coaster. I want to go through that maze. Like, it, it just, it's like, you want to experience it over and over again because the thrill of the ride is so fantastic that you can't imagine not doing it again. That's, that's the best. You know, that is, that's my favorite part of my job, without a doubt. We've got the most just excellent fans, many of which I see right here in the front row. Yeah. Come and see us all the time. Like, doing this for you guys every year is just such a pleasure. So it's so exciting to see you all coming out and supporting us and supporting our talent, supporting our makeup artists, our technicians, and all the people who put this together, everyone from RWS, and of course, the inspiration of all of these things. Coming together and seeing you all here is just really cool. So thank you all for being here. or anything else, it's something that in the production that you want to talk about specifically. Have you guys talked about which parks Trick or Treat is at specifically? Did we talk about it? We sure didn't. Okay. Each park's going to go out there and make big announcements, so uh, I think it'll be really fun for people to find out 
where it's coming to next, so stay tuned to sixflags.com, but um, it's coming to a couple of parks, so I think there's gonna be, it's going to be in a lot of different places for people to experience. I went all of the parks. And you can work at all of them? All of them. Okay. <laughs> and you, you start with us and most nights yes. with us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a really good point. Like the idea is to continue to grow it and take it to more and more people and go to more and more parks. Um, and, and can I make a request? Yeah. Is anybody here from Ohio by chance? One person? <laughs> <laughs> Only one other Ohioan, okay. So, Six Flags just merged with Cedar Fair. So, Kings Island and Cedar Point. Okay. So, those are my two I'll see what I thought you were going to work them, right? If I build them, you'll work them. Yes. Okay. I will. Yes. I will. Then done deal. All right. Make that happen. <laughs> Everything's contingent on your labor from here on yes. forward. <laughs> <laughs> we think as long as you're going to be there to support it, we'll do whatever we want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Working on this project has been magical. It's it's to bring this to people at the extreme level. Everything you're going to see, it's like no experience we've created in a long time. And it's been an honor to do it with RWS. It's been an honor to do it with these creative people. And we can't wait for everybody to see it. Because it really is like no experience you will see. Um, and we're grateful to, to have worked on it. Yeah, absolutely. Great. I have a lot of questions for you. I mean, the, the, the announcement of this is, has been huge yes. and, and everything. So just, you know, can you talk about just what the what the response has been like for you and what you're seeing from, from all these great people and their yeah. excitement? And I, I don't know if you noticed it at the beginning, but the announcement was kicked off by Mr. Six. Ooh, I think they noticed. Mr. Six. <laughs> I think a few people noticed. Um, and he, you know, he's been a part of our brand for a long time and had been kind of dormant. And this is how big this thing felt to us. And Mr. Six needed to come home and help us announce it. And the response has been amazing. Not only to him making a brief appearance and then getting run over by a bus. I really like that, but I think you guys like it too. But the response from our own fans, from Halloween fans, from just our own um, everyday guests has been phenomenal. And everybody's still talking about it. That's what shocks me is that every day I can visit our site and somebody is saying something wonderful about what's coming and that they can't wait. And that's really what, for us, for you and I who work at these parks and who love this brand so much, for people to be excited about us and want to come visit us and spend time with us is a dream come true. That's it. That's the best way to describe it. I think all five of us would agree that this is kind of a dream come true, standing here and talking to all of you about something that we're passionate about and seeing you guys being so excited to come see it. So make sure you do Six Flags Pride Fest Extreme this fall. Buy tickets. Buy tickets. Six Flags. 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 Six Fl